our first guests created their own great American adventure by starting with the question, and here it was. This is the question they posed in the Atlantic magazine. Why should I go to your town? Think about that. They wanted to visit places people often fly over instead of flying to. So they did something I would never do. They jumped in a four-seater propeller plane and took off on a 100,000-mile journey to the heart of America. And in their new HBO documentary, Our Towns, they're painting a portrait of the small town experience. When you tell somebody you're from Eastport, Maine, or any small town for that matter, they just assume that you've never seen the bright lights in the big city. They'll look at you and say, well, this is a cell phone. You ever seen one of those before? It's just that belief that somehow, by living out here, we're not as metropolitan and as savvy as to what's going on with the world. I would argue that perhaps we know it even a little better because we take the time to focus on it. And that makes us a whole lot more worldly than people believe. Well, Deborah and James Fallows join us now. Thank you both for joining us. I have to tell you, I saw this promo run um, one late night watching HBO, and I said to my team, we got to talk about this, because we're all now in that mindset, James. Maybe we should take a road trip. What should we do? And I saw a study that said most people will drive around three to four hours from their home, which means a lot of small towns are right in our eyesight. Uh, that is true. And we're here to testify that people should do this. It's harder to travel internationally now than it's been, you know, in pa past years. But this country is so full of rich, fascinating and important places where people, in addition to having all the unique characteristics you're going to talk about in this program, they're also solving the problems the country as a whole needs to deal with, whether it's education or sustainability or inclusion or all the rest. So we would say get on the road or if you have a little tiny airplane like us, go in the air. Well, Deborah, I was saying that in the beginning of the show, I love people who love where they're from. You know, I, I, I think about all of even the hit songs that are just people repping their city from rap to country, name it. What is it about that connection we have to really wanting to brag on where we're from? I think it's maybe a little bit of that duckling imprint. The place where you grew up is the place that shaped you and gave you a lot of your values and certainly all your growing up experience. So what we found when we was when we were flying around and going to cities for a couple of weeks at a time was that people did love to talk about their hometowns. When when we ask any kind of question of what's going on here or what do you like, they would open up immediately, and that actually was one of the easiest parts of the travel to get people talking about where they're from. You stayed in each town for two weeks. Why did you want that two week experience, Deborah? What is what was that about that magic number being there for those fourteen days or so? Well, you know, you can't just, it's a very different experience if you drop in and go to a diner and start asking people kind of the usual questions uh, about national politics. It takes a little bit longer to get to a level of trust and to start to hear stories repeatedly and to see enough different places. Go to the newspaper, go to the schools, go to the library, go to the health clinic, go to some afternoon or evening local sports events where you can really kind of embed yourself into the town and, and feel a sense of what it's like. There were a number of places that we liked so much, we went back five or six times. If we'd had all the time in the world, we, we would have stayed longer. You visited six towns, James. I mean, listen, we live, I live in New York City. I'm from a very, very small town. I can attest to the fact that New Yorkers believe it is the greatest city on earth, and they would arm wrestle you through any park if you tried to prove them otherwise. I, I mean, how do you convince people like myself who've lived in Chicago, I've lived in Philadelphia, as I said, New York, that big cities don't have a lock on everything that is great in this country? Sure. Big cities have the things which are unique to big cities. I'm talking to you from Washington, D.C. right now, which has the nation's government. And New York has all the things it does in Seattle and San Francisco. What I think people may have lost sight of is how much is there in other places and how many places around the country. We heard people saying this town is just the right size. It's big enough that you can find lots of things you want to do. It's small enough you can have some influence. So, so people with different tastes can find that in a town of, of you know, 1,500 in East 
Eastport, Maine, where we've been, or 250,000 in Columbus, Ohio. So I think there's a just the density and a surprise of experience in the U.S. is would open a lot of people's eyes. Well, I have to tell you too. I mean, there are a lot of stereotypes that come along with. And, and facts of hard life that come along, Deborah, with being in a small town. I know very clearly the health um, issues that face Luling, Texas, where I'm from. If a person needs a specialty doctor, they've got to drive all the way to Austin, Texas. That's a 45-minute or hour-long drive, even the distribution of vaccines. So it is not all, as I used to say in my deadline crime days, a bucolic picture of Americana. It has its struggles like any other place. Clearly, they have their struggles. And... and Part of our journey was not to whitewash any of these. We saw all of the kinds of issues that you hear about in America, opioids, um, people on, kids on drugs, uh, all, the, people losing jobs, factories closing down, towns having to reinvent themselves. But when you're from a small town, and both Jim and I are from small towns, so this kind of came naturally to us, you know how people have to rely on each other, how they have to get along with each other, how, how they have to be the ones who solve their problems mm. because they know what's, what is right and what is wrong. And, that, and they know, as one person told me, Microsoft is not coming to our town. They're not going to save us. If we want to change something, we have to do it ourselves. Mm. So the, the idea that of getting a realistic sense of what your town is, yeah. what's the story of your town, what are your problems, how do you solve them? And we are in this together, and the buck stops with us, is what happens in small towns, for better and worse. It's a fascinating documentary. Thank you both for joining us. Our Towns, the documentary is streaming on HBO Max. Thanks to Deborah and James for joining us.